Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of the F1 2021 and my driver career mode coming at you today we have the French GP here at circuit uh, DePaul red card very excited for this one here as I think it'll be a good opportunity for us hopefully to run pretty well now in the Aston Martin coming off of a nice points finish in a very calm Canada race at our home track there for the Montreal GP so it'll be interesting to see if we can back it up with a solid run here today in France so we've had top 10 speed every single race so far this season hopefully that continues over into today as well we beat our teammate of Sebastian Vettel every single race so far which is a bit surprising now, coming into this weekend, I was looking at the weather, of course, and it was looking like it might rain for a little bit in qualifying, but in the race, it was going to look likely uh, going to stay pretty dry. So definitely not anything to be concerned about there in the race weather, but we come through into FP1 here uh, as we were ready to make some laps and get that track climatization program set in and then as well as the race strategy. And uh, I overall, for some reason, I don't know what it was, but the car just felt really hooked up here in this first practice session. We were pretty much nailing absolutely everything and you're about to see just that here now as we come through to start our track acclimatization program and we actually went pretty much all purple, I think it was, throughout the whole lap and usually I don't do that usually I mess up a few gates here and there I didn't get down on the throttle hard enough or early enough because I wasn't confident enough with the grip of the car but we came through to cross the line here down this run straight away with purple and all gates on the circuit so it was looking pretty good and then we come through to start our race strategy program and it was even better it felt like because we were well above the delta time that we were set by the team of a goal to beat and uh, it would just be consistently a really good session for our Aston Martin team and definitely was building my confidence up because I felt like this is the best practice sessions we have had all season long. We come through now on this second lap. We can see once again, we are well above that goal time set by the team and we just continue to smash that Delta. And as we came through now onto this final lap here uh, of this third attempt, if you can go green all three laps, you don't have to do five laps. So uh, we came through out of that final turn. Once again, well over a second up on the Delta time we came through down the front stretch, crossing the line. And sure enough, we go green there as we hit the optimal pace. So we actually did not beat our teammate of Sebastian Vettel in FP1, but he as well was on the soft compound tire compared to our medium compound, uh, so I wasn't really sure exactly where our pace was compared to him, but then we came through in FP2 doing the little quick practice uh, sim simulation basically to try and get the maximum R&D from the ERS program that I don't care for. The only practice programs I like to do is qualifying pace, race strategy, and uh, track acclimatization. And then I like to just simulate the rest of them here in the quick practice. So now coming into qualifying though, it was a sunny start to the session. So it was looking all right here uh, as it looks like Otmar comes up to talk to us now as we're ready to go and start our first flying lap. Now my first lap was not very good. You're about to see that as we head down this front stretch across the line. And it was, like I said, not a great lap. I actually did uh, uh, a P6 which was over a second off of who was at first at the time. So we ended up P16 towards the end of the session. So obviously we have to go out and make a second attempt to make it into Q2. So we head back out uh, and this lap was significantly better. I noticed where of course I had given up some time and I knew I could push harder on my lap. So as we came through now a little bit later in the lap already three to four tenths of a second, nearly half a second uh, better than our first previous lap and it would only get better as we came through to cross the line. It was seven and a half tenths better and that would get us into Q2. Not by a whole lot, but it was still enough there. P14 right behind our teammate of Sebastian Vettel there, but quite a bit of time off of Sebastian, about six tenths of a second between us now as we came through into Q2. It was raining, so we did need the intermediate tire uh, for this qualifying session. I was trying to wait longer in the session to go out but I realized the conditions were going to get worse so I decided to go out here with about seven minutes or so left in the session now as we had uh, in my opinion a decent first lap but could have been a lot better you can see a mistake right there made by myself that cost us some time but usually the second lap for me on an intermediate tire seems to be a lot better than the first lap so I uh, decided to commit to a second attempt here and we were already up by a tenth, which wasn't as much as I was hoping for. But you see, we gained a good chunk of time right there. Two tenths, nearly three tenths. But now we lose the car and we actually crash into the barrier, lose the right front tire. And for the second time this season, first time at Monaco, now in France, we have crashed out of qualifying here in the Aston Martin there. A bit of an abrupt and didn't quite see it coming. I lost the back of the car, but I knew if I got out of the throttle too much, I was going to lose a bunch of time. And I would just try to stay committed. And it didn't work out, obviously, as we're going to end up starting in the 15th position 
for the France GP. So now we got some work to do. Our teammate is Sebastian Vettel there in P13 as we're going to send it over to Crofty and Davidson for the pre-race in France. Hello and welcome to the circuit Paul Ricard, current home of the French Grand Prix and events dating all the way back to 1906. It's been held at many venues over the years with famous moments from Dijon and Manicourt, the feature of many a highlights reel. And let's hope we see more of those in the race today. The circuit Paul Ricard then, a 3.6 mile track, 25 miles east of Marseille. 15 corners here, six to the left and nine to the right, with the main overtaking chance expected going into turn eight. Top speeds today should be around 205 miles per hour. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. Max Verstappen put in a fantastic lap yesterday, and he starts from pole position, edging out Sergio Perez, who lines up P2. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Bottas, Ricardo, Lando Norris, and Leclerc, Sainz, Gasly, Russell, and Yuki Tsunoda, Ocon, Vettel, Antonio Giovinazzi, and Hamilton, they've taken a grid penalty. The rookie, Ireland, and Guan Yu Zhou, and Nicholas Latifi. Mick Schumacher, and Lance Stroll brings the grid to a close. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. There you saw the pre-race starting grid. You saw Lewis Hamilton taking a grid penalty starting down here in 14th place for the start of the GP. Could be a bit of an impact for him. Uh, hasn't had a great start to the season other than, of course, the first few races. Uh, and now Mercedes in general has had a bit of a rough stretch here leading into the France GP. Now as we're ready to go green. Now as we get to the grid, our teammate of Sebastian Vettel up there in the 12th place. We beat him in every GP so far. This time he's out-qualified us once again. He didn't make Q3 though, surprisingly. So we'll see who comes out on top between us two. Now is this Red Bull on the front row five. Red lights is its first step and in Paris on the front row as we are underway for the French GP. Now it's not a great start from Bottas there in the Mercedes. He's three wide in the middle between the two McLarens of Norris and Ricardo under attack and it turns one. The Red Bulls get away well but they're still three wide and it looks like there's going to be some contact there. I see debris flying from potentially the Mercedes of Bottas. Now it's been a terrible start for him and clearly he's going to have some wing damage as they go down into turns uh, three that is now. So that's a big hit for the Mercedes driver of Valtteri Bottas now as I can't tell if anyone else has got some damage that was a wild start we saw three wide going all over the place right there including myself was actually in the middle of a three wide we'll get a look at what happened in a few moments time on that start for everybody now as Bottas is under attack again from the McLaren it looks like I believe that is Lando Norris there up his left hand side and now he's three wide with the Alpha Tori there on the right hand side with Pierre Gasly and you saw Norris back out Gasly goes around Bottas so you can clearly see Bottas has some wing damage missing that right side end plate so so a big hit for him. He's going to probably have to come into the pit lane at the end of this first and opening lap of the GP. A wild start here in France. Side by side between Norris and the Alpine. I believe that's George Russell right there as they head down into the carousel. Side by side. Bottas had such a horrible entry right there that Russell was actually able to get past him. And you see the train that Bottas has now just kind of created now. As you see Lewis Hamilton trying to make a pass there on Esteban Ocon uh, towards the end of this first and opening 
opening lap now as Bottas is going to head into the pit lane here and so is actually George Russell in the Alpine so it looks like he got some damage on the start as well so an absolute disastrous start for Mercedes again as it seems like this team is starting to crumble under the pressure in the beginning part of this season as now Bottas is into the pit lane to fix that wing a brand new wing goes on and same for George Russell in the Alpine putting on the medium compound tires for both drivers as they're going to head back out on the track we're going to get a look at what happened for both Bottas as well as George Russell here on the start of this GP so Bottas did not have a good start it was absolutely horrendous and of course he gets taken three wide by both the McLaren drivers of Norris and Ricardo here and you're going to see he really doesn't have a whole lot of room right here coming through turns two but right here he makes some contact with Daniel Ricardo loses that right front uh, wing end plate and that's all it takes to just completely destroy your race so now on board with George Russell who had a way better start than Bontas did actually gets to the left hand side of both the Ferraris right here and is looking really really good going down into turns one but what happens right here is he locks up his tire on the right front and actually made some contact there with the Alpha Tori of Pierre Gasly so now on board with myself for the start here we actually got a pretty decent launch as well then kind of faded as we were going down towards turns one i got taken three wide into turns one by both of the alpha romeos of guan yu Zhou as well as kyle mylot here into turns one i was just hoping that i wasn't going to hit anything thankfully nothing went wrong right there uh but fortunately we would uh, just kind of just do our own thing and just stay out of trouble so as we came through to the end of lap two now running in the 13th position uh behind lewis hamilton so we were just trying our best to stick with these guys now as drs was enabled and you can see Kyle Mylod actually gotten in front of Hamilton as well as our teammate of Sebastian Vettel and they were trying to work on passing him Hamilton up the right hand side of Sebastian there Sebastian goes very defensive pinches him into the corner Hamilton has to back out right there as I nearly get into the back gearbox of Lewis and damage my own front wing but by the time we came through to the end of lap three now Hamilton you can see has got that DRS open but it's not going to be enough as uh, Vettel does as well and he's actually going to pass Kyle Mylod into turns one there in that Alfa Romeo so uh, Sebastian moves up into now the 10th spot there as now Hamilton's going to make a move on Eilat as well on the right hand side I got Antonio Giovinazzi behind me uh, still within DRS it reigns there as Hamilton still side by side with Callum Eilat here as they go through these double right handers nearly some contact between them two very close quarters racing unfortunately I didn't have a great corner so I would have to wait all the way to the front straight away on at the end of lap four to get an opportunity to pass Callum myself and we dive to the right hand side down towards turns one easy pass already clear of him down into the corner now Lewis Hamilton was right on the gearbox of our teammate of Sebastian Vettel ready to pounce on him and make a pass just like he did on Isla here previously and uh, couldn't make anything happen right there down into turns three but it was just a matter of time of course in that Mercedes until he was going to be able to make that pass on our teammate of Sebastian Vettel and sure enough that would happen uh, within the next couple of moments so now to lap six here we were losing some uh, time actually to our teammate of Sebastian and we were about two and a half seconds behind him by the time we came to lap seven so it wasn't looking good for us he was actually outpacing me for the first time uh, in a GP this season and he wasn't just outpacing me by a long shot it was pretty close but he was outpacing me enough to where he could comfortably pull that gap away lap by lap by a couple of tenths or so I was kind of on an island of my own at this point. I had no pressure from behind. Eilat was the closest guy, 4.3 seconds back, and Sebastian was pulling away from me. So uh, I was basically pulling away from everybody behind me, and everybody in front of me was pulling away from me. So I knew I was kind of going to be on an island by myself for the majority of this GP at this point. Now it just came through to start lap 10. Now towards lap 12 already, we have Perez actually now under attack from Max Verstappen here down into this uh, sweeping right-hander. And Max Verstappen is able to get back out front in the French GP as they come through this long sweeping right hand carousel now as pit stops are going to be coming up momentarily and actually potentially we could see Verstappen come in or Perez come in at the end of this 12th lap right here and it's going to be very important to see which one of these guys pits because they're so close together whoever pits first is going to have a clear advantage now and it looks like it's going to be Max Verstappen who just took the lead he is going to come into the pit lane here at the end of this 12th lap so uh, Perez has to try and find a way to maybe make that overcut work here on Max Verstappen now at the end of lap 12 for myself as well I would come into the pit lane had a bit of a weird pit entry there I still didn't realize how I was supposed to take that pit entry but after seeing how Verstappen and other drivers were doing it now I have a good idea of how I'm supposed to do that so uh, you don't actually have to follow that kind of uh, pit lane little marker there on that outside of the corner so we come in to put the hard tire on the only pit stop we have to make today and we're going to the end 
of this GP. And hopefully this will help us get a bit of an undercut on our teammate of Sebastian Vettel. Uh, but unfortunately, I lost quite a bit of time on the pit entry that is probably going to end up losing us time overall to Sebastian, even by pitting a lap or two potentially earlier than him. So we come out in P17, no pressure around us. Lewis Hamilton had put on the hard tire as well. He was already eight and a half seconds ahead of myself there. Uh, now, as we came through to the end of lap 13, Perez comes in a lap later than Verstappen puts on the hard tire as well. So now the question was, where's Verstappen? So Lando Norris coming in. Carlos Sainz in the Ferrari, Yuki Tsunoda in the AlphaTauri BMW. And here is Max Verstappen heading out down this front straightaway. And it's probably not going to be much of a fight right here. Perez is not going to be anywhere close enough to even fight Verstappen at this time. So Verstappen back out front here now as we came through to the end of lap 13 cycling through to pass Valtteri Bottas actually who's struggling so hard to move forwards after that first lap damage that he had picked up and had to pit of course at the end of lap one so he's still making a decent recovery though because he's 13th place as we are now down to 14th maybe uh actually back up to 13th as we came through to lap 15 so now as you can see though Vettel was 3.7 seconds ahead of me uh past the halfway point in this GP and just once again on an island of my own at this point nothing really going on for us so far here in the French GP. It looks like we might have an issue. Hang in there. We're attempting to manage it. Nothing really going on for us in the French GP. Maybe some famous last words here because Jeff just comes over the radio and says, you know what, there might be an issue and we're looking into it. So hopefully it doesn't uh, turn into anything too big. We haven't added single... DNF all season. We almost had one in China, but we got to the final lap before the engine was actually blowing out on us. And then when you get to the final lap, it can't actually have a failure, which is really weird. So I was hoping for the best outcome here now as we're trying to make it to the end, but it's not going to happen. Our engine has failed and we are going to be out of the French GP for the first DNF of the season. Very unfortunate there as this was just not our day, uh, not our weekend. You know, we didn't have uh, what we needed in qualifying. We wrecked out of qualifying. Sebastian Vettel has outpaced us all race and it just kind of felt like it was meant to be uh, to DNF, honestly. And about, I would say, two, three minutes before this happened, I don't know why, when I was recording, I thought to myself, I was like, I feel like this is going to be one of those races where we end up DNFing. And sure enough, we are out of the French GP. And just like in qualifying when it was raining in uh, Q2, we're going to disappointingly uh, head into the paddock now as we have some post-race celebrations to see who ended up winning in the overall podium here in France for, at uh, Circuit de Paul Ricard. A great race then and a fantastic victory here at Paul Ricard. Anthony Davidson, what helped them deliver this result, do you think? Well, this was a real team victory. They put together a solid strategy today that appeared well suited to the conditions out on track. The driver did everything that was expected of them in the moment to really execute the team's plan to perfection. A shining example of how F1 really is a team sport. Here come today's winners. The team at Red Bull have done a phenomenal job recently. It's clear to see that they've put in the work and they should be proud of the victory they secured here. Sergio Perez ended up passing Max Verstappen there after coming up behind him on the pit stops to actually win the GP for the first time with this Red Bull BMW team. Verstappen second, Ricardo rounds off the podium there in third place. The best Mercedes was Lewis Hamilton in seventh. Bottas ended up getting up to tenth, and we were the only driver that ended up DNFing now. Uh, as, like I said, Mercedes kind of crumbling under the pressure right now, having a bit of a meltdown, meltdown here uh, as we get closer and closer to the halfway point of the season. So they need to pick it up right away because Verstappen has a 32 point lead over Perez. Hamilton is down to fifth in the standings behind Daniel Ricciardo. So Mercedes has a lot of work to do and they still have the best car. So uh, clearly they need to get their act together very, very quick now as they're not even leading the constructor standings as Red Bull is in charge of that as well. You can see it was our energy store that ended up failing us, unfortunately. So we're going to uh, actually, I think, have to take a grid penalty in the next episode uh, in Austria, I think we're going to. And flashbacks to Austria last season, that was actually the track where we had our first ever mechanical failure. So 
Hopefully we don't have deja vu there. That was a crazy race. Probably the craziest one so far of our F1 career mode. And we'll see how it goes uh, next time out as well. Hopefully it'll be just as crazy because that would only benefit us if we can stay out of trouble, that is. But uh, the first as well race that Sebastian Vettel has beat us this season. I can tell you right now, even without the DNF, Sebastian was going to beat us anyway. He outpaced us the whole length of that GP. I just had absolutely nothing for him. And unless he DNF'd, uh, that was the only way I was going to be able to beat him. So, uh, unfortunate ending to our French GP. I was enjoying that race. I mean, obviously, there wasn't a lot going on, but I felt pretty comfortable behind the wheel other than the pace. But now we're tied in the rivalry. It'll be close there. But before we end it, just want to say thank you. And if you guys enjoyed, you know what to do. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day, everybody.